G'day everyone, welcome back to the uh, the design of PCB um, in uh, dip trace uh, videos. This is the single sided um, the single sided board that we're doing at the moment. Um, this is the one that you can etch yourself. I'll be doing a fabricated um, PCB in the next tutorials, as I mentioned in the first video. Um, but um, this one's going to be the single sided the single sided um, version. Um, and one thing I didn't explain in the last video was what ref des means. It's basically, I'm pretty sure it means reference designator, which is these um, uh, these numbers R1, R2, C1. Just basically means like component label. That's what the number, uh, the number that represents the um, component on your layout. Um, so before we continue on, we actually need a couple more um, uh, a couple more things um, to to make this um, to make this board complete. Um, uh, well, at least make it complete for us to be able to route route out the um, the circuit. Um, so uh, we're going to place some pads up the top here. You can see place pad. Just put one down. Um, just left click, then right click when you're done, just like you do when you um, when you put down a um, a component, and then um, select it. Right click and go prep pad properties, and then patterns pad properties, um, and then just change that to 1.8, 1.8. So it's the same as the others. Um, and then copy and paste that three times. So these will be input, output, plus and ground. Now I'm actually doing stuff here that I'm not explaining. So let me just um, slow down a bit. This one here I'm going to use for the input. This one's going to be the ground. This one's going to be nine volts. I'm just going to stick it there for the moment. And this one's going to be output. Now you notice that I'm putting these in a, in a very um, systematical spot because I kind of got in the habit of putting these in the place that they're needed. Um, so the input is on the left and the output is on the right. No, it's not. Guitar pedal, the, the output is on the left and the input is on the right. Yes, but you usually mount the board um, uh, upside down inside the enclosure. As you'd know if you built guitar pedals, when you flip it over, um, the input and the output swap around. So you put the input on the left and the, and the output on the, on the right. And it's I think it's pretty much just sort of general practice to put um, a to put a, um, a ground, uh, your, your ground connection next to the input. It could be more for high gain, um, high gain sort of stuff, but um, it's just good practice to get into anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna move those around a bit. Um, put the input there in the ground. Um, I'm not gonna do this very neatly actually, because um, neatness is uh, something that you have to spend a lot of time messing around with, and it's probably something that you can do um, when we finish the video, you can, you can mess around with it. Um, as much as you like um, to get it all nice and neat, uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roughly place this stuff. Um, it's quite, actually kind of a bit of a skill on its own, actually getting a PCB um, neat. Um, but um, yeah, I'll leave it up to you to do. Um, once we finish it, you can play around with it. Um, so let's start connecting these um, connections up, um, and uh, you want to refer to that um, Beavis Audio um, buffer. Um, schematic like I said last time, uh, Google Beavis Audio Buffer uh, and it's the op amp buffer with this TL071 um, and if you haven't been to Beavis Audio's website you should go there and read pretty much everything on the entire site because it's a very good, it's a very good um, website. Um, and actually one more thing we're going to add before we start connecting things up is some labels just so we can see what we're doing with them um, so we can remember which one's plus, minus, um, input, output. Um, so the label uh, the label tool is up here, ABC next to the shapes, place text, and then just click down here and type in. Uh, well, this will be this will be input, um, and obviously that's kind of a bit big. Um, so right click on it and go font, and then size. You'll notice only goes down to eight, but you can actually just, you can put one or whatever number you want in there. So I'm going to do four, um, which will make it about the right size, like that. And then copy, paste, just so you don't have to edit the font size again. And right click, and then click on input at the top of that menu and change it to ground, or something that roughly represents the word ground. And then do it again, change it to plus nine volt. And then change that one to output. 
Okay, so now we know what um, what the pads, the floating pads um, represent, so we don't make any errors. Um, and we're going to start. I'm going to start on the input, and we're going to work our way through the um, through the circuit. I may change things as I go, which I sometimes do. I find sometimes after I start connecting things up, I, I go back and say, well, that would be much better if I had done it a different way. So let's. I'm just doing this freehand at the moment. So let's see how we go. Um, the first track we're going to play. Scott to the top here. You'll see we're going to use two. We're going to use two tools here. One of them's um, route manual, and the other one's edit traces. Um, so first, do route manual, um, and click on the input, and then go to one of the legs of uh, well, the closest leg of the, of C1, um, and then we're going to change that track width because it's quite thin. Um, and to do that, we'll go to the other tool, which is edit traces. You can see it's diff very difficult for me to click on that um, tr on that track. It just wants to. It just wants to um, select the capacitor or the um, pad. So if you do edit traces, it will only select the pad. See, now it's much easier. It won't actually edit anything else. I can hover over anything. Not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna highlight it. Um, it's not gonna focus on it. Um, it'll only focus on that trace. So hover over the trace so it go, turns blue, and then right click and go net width, and then go custom. We're changing the size of the um, of of the track. Um, and then change the width to 0.5 should be should be big enough. Um, I'm just zooming in to see how big it actually is. Um, you could go maybe 0.6 if you want. I'll just leave mine on 0.5, um, and um, I might just leave it um, zoomed in a bit so you can see what's going on a bit easier. Um, so if you follow the schematic, you'll see that the other side of the capacitor is connected to R1, R2, and pin three. Um, so I'm initially going to just connect. Um, I'm gonna. Con I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna swap them around. Um, so R2 is on the bottom because R2 you'll notice is connected to ground. So logically, it probably should be closer to ground. Um, and and um, R1 is connected not to nine volts, which is at the top. So that would probably work out a bit better. So let's go route manual and connect. I'm gonna connect um, this capacitor with that side of R1, and then um, that. Uh, that pad of R2 and then connect um, that pad to uh, this one goes actually to pin 3 not pin 2 um, so connect that to pin 3 so to count this this the pins on this um, IC in case you don't know it's um, the square pin is one where the notch is you go to the left of the notch um, this has a square pin which is nice for us to remember that that is pin 1 so you go pin 1 2 3 4 across 5 6 7 8 you don't go. You don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't work that way. You go um, uh, anti-clockwise around the um, around the IC. Um, so let's change that um, that track. You might be able to select it without having to use the um, uh, edit traces tool, um, which I can there. So just right click on that and then go net. If you go trace, it will only change. Well, we'll do trace. I'll show you what the difference is between net and trace. Um, so do trace. Change it to. Um, the same width that you did last time, so in this case it was 0.5. See how that only that one trace has um, has enlarged in size. Um, the the rest of the net hasn't changed. So you might be seeing now what those two terms mean. Um, a net is a connection of traces. Um, so <clears throat> it's obviously much easier to change the net instead of changing each individual trace. So just go right click net and then um, custom and then put in. 0.5, and you'll see that all the traces will change on that net, so it's um it's uh it's quicker. Um, and then R2 connects to ground, um, which is nice and convenient. That's why I um swapped those two um, resistors around before. So let's just um, connect those up. Bit of logical thinking involved with this laying out. Um, and I mean this is a very basic circuit. You can imagine some of the um mad bean effects, um uh you know, or any of the modulation effects can get very uh, very complicated and you really need to know what you're doing for those and we'll just change that net um, to 0.5 as well okay so um, that's that um, that's um, those those uh, components taken care of um, so I'm just I'm just manipulating these track tracks it's a bit of an art form you'll learn um, what does what once you play around with them you'll get used to moving those those tracks it's not really something that I can explain to you just mess around with them um, and see how it works. Uh, see how they, um, how the um, 
uh, different arrows that, that appear when you go over a track um, um, interact with the um, with the track. Um, so you can see I'm pulling out a line from the other side of R2 there if I do that. Um, but yeah, that's probably something that comes more with the experience, not something that I can really explain as such. So R1 connects to 9 volt, which is kind of over the other side of the board. Let's just um, let's just um, stick that um, uh, over uh, near R1 um, like that. Um, and connect that up like so and um, just put the 9 volt label on the other side and it, and it also connects to pin 7 which is over here so I'm just going to go across and I'm going to go I'm going to go through the middle here like that and um, you might sort of be thinking um, that it's um, well that I may have cut off this um, 8 this, this pin 8, but pin 8 is actually not even used, so it doesn't matter, and pin 1 is not used either. Um, pin 2 is, pin 2 is actually connected to pin 6, so let's connect that now, so go from pin 2 to pin 6, whoops, that was a bit of a sloppy trace, um, and then do, uh, cl I'm going to click on um, edit traces, because I can't select it underneath the IC, uh, just, just to straighten that out, so it looks a bit neater. Um, and we might as well change those tra uh, the trace size again, so let's do that to make them a bit thicker for our etch. Okay, so um, so those are connected. Pin 4 is actually connected to ground, which is n another convenient... I've put this um, ground track in a convenient location there, so just connect that up like that. Um, and do the same. Change net width 2.5. And then um, we've got um, pin 5 isn't used either, so we don't have to worry about pin 5 either. Um, and um, just notice that one's not um, the right size, so I'll just change that. Uh, there's actually a way that you can put in a custom size for the trace, but um, I just didn't want to get too complicated with that, so I've left that out of this tutorial. Might do it in, might do it in the next one when we do the, um, uh, when we do the fabricated board. Um, so that all looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to lift that up. Um, there and put the output underneath um, because we're already the board's going to go across the top here and we're already up using up this space up the top so I might, as well just, I might as well just move the capacitor up and put the output underneath it's a bit neater that way um, so the output is actually connected uh, sorry the the pin 6 is connected to the plus um, of the capacitor um, and uh, the uh, the minus of the capacitor is connected to the output like that, and then just change the um, just change the um, the trace uh, the net widths as we've been doing. Uh, so I haven't um, checked over this. I'm pretty sure that it's um, that it's correct. Um, you may want to just make sure before you um, etch one and build it, just to make sure that we've. Um, that we've done all these connections and pretty much uh, these connections correctly and pretty much any um, PCB that I make I check over multiple times before I get them fabricated before I before I etch them because I just like to make sure that the thing's right before I even bother starting to build it because there's no point building something that's not going to work um, uh, at all so you want to you want to really be thorough with your um, connections go through it systematically like we did when we set this up one connection at a time make sure everything's connected properly. Um, so that's pretty good and um, believe it or not that is the effect um, pretty much uh, pretty much done. 